Welcome back to Hardware Unavailable. Today we're taking a look at PowerColor's RX 6800 Red Dragon. This is sort of their, don't fall over, their mid-range offering. Uh, it sits between the Fighter, which we've already looked at, and the Red Devil. We've only looked at the 6800 XT Devil, not the 6800 Devil, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, I'm really keen to look at this particular model because historically the Dragon series has been very popular as it offers sort of high-end light performance at or very near the base MSRP, which I suppose right now is not super relevant. But anyway, typically good value product. Hopefully one day this, this will be a good value product. Of course, MSRP means absolutely nothing these days. And I've almost forgotten what the Radeon RX 6800 MSRP is even meant to be. I think $580 US if I recall correctly. And this is why this review is going up now and not three months ago when I actually got the card. Basically, I have been holding off, hoping availability and pricing would improve, and as you're no doubt painfully aware, it hasn't. Still, rather than leave this thing sitting in its box on my floor for another three months, let's just check it out and see if it's actually worth buying when you can. As usual, I'll start by taking a look around the card, then we'll take the cooler off for a closer look at the PCB and the cooler itself, and of course, then we'll jump into the graphs. The Red Dragon is a fairly basic looking graphics card. Nothing too flashy here, though it does manage to look quite aggressive. In terms of dimensions, the card measures 310 millimeters long, 135 millimeters tall, and is 54 millimeters wide. So quite a large triple slot design then. Now those dimensions do make it a little bit longer, taller, and wider than the RX 6800 fighter, and as such, it weighs 30% more at 1446 grams. So in terms of weight, it is certainly getting up there. On the front side of the card, you'll find a black plastic fan shroud housing a trio of fans. The outer two fans measure 100 millimeters in diameter, while the centrally located fan is a 90 millimeter model, all of which spin in the same direction. Now, giving the shroud a bit of flair are some chrome rings around the outer fans, and I think it does look quite good. And then for a little extra bling, power colors included a red LED backlit dragon logo on the side of the card. You'll also find a pair of 8-pin PCI power connectors here as well. Then, moving around to the back side of the card, we find a full-length aluminium backplate featuring a few cutouts at the end that allow air to pass through. Interestingly, PowerColor has spaced the backplate quite far from the PCB, 4mm in fact, and that's about double what we normally see. This will help with airflow between the PCB and the backplate, though it means using thermal pads here to extract heat from the PCB won't really be an option. Finally, around on the I.O. panel, we have a single HDMI 2.1 port along with three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs. Now, unlike the Fighter, which had a button for switching the BIOS on the I.O. panel, the Red Dragon uses the more traditional PCB switch, which you'll have to access from inside the PC case. So that's an external look around the Red Dragon. I've got to say, it is an aggressive looking graphics card, but at the same time, it is also somewhat minimalistic looking as well. Anyway, it's now time to take this thing apart, and we'll start by looking at the cooler. PowerColor is cooling the GPU, GDDR6, and VRM components with a single heatsink, meaning there's no additional heatsinks or heat spreaders on the card. So this does keep things very simple. The cooler is made up of two main banks of aluminium fins. There are seven 6mm copper heat pipes in total, and a large copper base for making contact with the GPU and GDDR6 memory. In total, the cooler weighs 1,001 grams, and that includes the fans and fan shroud. Now, moving away from the cooler, we find the backplate, which is fairly heavy at 147 grams. And as noted earlier, due to the larger spacing between the backplate and PCB, PowerColor hasn't been able to use the more pads, which would see the backplate used as a heat spreader. So the backplate is just that. It's a backplate. It does help protect the rear side of the PCB, though, and it will also aid in reducing PCB flex, as it is quite thick. Then over on the 250mm long PCB, we find a pretty basic VRM configuration. 10 power stages for the GPU, and 3 for the GDDR6 memory. Whereas the AMD reference card uses a 12 plus 3 configuration, PowerColor has cut that down to 10 plus 3. Though to be fair, the reference card is very robust, so this should work just fine. Although it is worth noting that PowerColor does use 70 amp Infineon power stages. Now, in terms of clock specifications, by default, the card operates at a boost clock frequency of 2170 megahertz, which is a 3% factory OC. And if you switch to the silent BIOS, the boost frequency is reduced to 2140 megahertz, though as expected, both BIOS options run the standard 16 gigabits per second memory. 
Now, playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider for 30 minutes saw the Red Dragon peak at 76 degrees in a 21 degree room inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, fully populated with fans. That's 12 degrees cooler than the AMD reference card, though it is worth noting that the Red Dragon sips power using 20 watts less than the AMD reference model, which was surprising to see, and it explains why this model runs so cool. Even more impressive was the fact that it achieved this temperature with a fan speed of just 1100 RPM, making the card extremely quiet at just 31 decibels, compared to 32 decibels for the AMD reference model. The typical core clock speed seen during our testing was 2225 MHz, and this saw the power consumption for just the graphics card hit 226 watts. So again, that's about 20 watts less than the AMD reference model. Now, for overclocking with the limits reached, we saw a peak operating temperature of 76 degrees, though we saw no change in fan speed. So another very impressive result. This overclock also saw the cores operate at 2,340 megahertz on average, and the memory also hit 17.1 gigabits per second, which is the current limit enforced by AMD. Finally, when overclocked, the card sucked down just 236 watts, which is less than what the power color fighter used out of the box. So very interesting that. Anyway, let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we'll be testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory, and the latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used. Alright, let's get into it. As usual with these custom AIB graphics card reviews, we're not going to look at loads of gaming benchmarks. In fact, Shadow of the Tomb Raider will do it. If you're after loads of gaming benchmarks, then please do watch our day one review or my recent 41 game benchmark between the RX 6800 and RTX 3070. Here the focus really is on thermals, power and overclocking, as this is an AIB card review. So as expected, out of the box, the 6800 Red Dragon is on par with the AMD reference card, and my manual overclock only boosted performance by a further 2%, averaging 136 FPS. Basically, this card is heavily power limited, which is why it performs so well in the thermal tests, and it's why we saw such low power consumption. The fighter, which really shouldn't overclock better, given it is meant to be a base model, does overclock better, and this is likely due to the higher power target, which saw higher power consumption. And here's a look at power consumption. Quite incredibly, the Red Dragon consumed just 226 watts, the same amount as the RTX 3070 Founders Edition graphics card. Our maximum overclock boosted power usage by just 4%, and at 236 watts, that was still less than the stock fighter. Meanwhile, the overclocked fighter consumed 258 watts, and that allowed it to maintain a higher clock speed, resulting in greater performance. That said, with both models overclocked, the fighter was just 3% faster, yet here we can see it consumed almost 10% more power. So the more efficient configuration of the Red Dragon makes more sense to me. As we saw earlier, the Red Dragon runs extremely cool out of the box, with a very low fan speed making it almost silent. The GPU edge temperature peaked at just 61 degrees, which is 8 degrees cooler than the fighter, which as we just saw, had to deal with an extra 15 watts of heat. The GPU hotspot temperature was also excellent. In fact, here the Red Dragon was 13 degrees cooler than the fighter, and that's a massive reduction in operating temperature for the same level of performance, though again, it did consume a lot less power. Now, given how efficient this model is, those 70 amp power stages weren't working nearly as hard as the 50 amp power stages found on the base model fighter, and as a result, we're looking at a massive 20 degree reduction in VRM operating temperature, dropping the peak to just 60 degrees, which is four degrees cooler than the AMD reference model. The GDDR6 memory temperature was also excellent, peaking at just 55 degrees, which is a degree cooler than the memory ran on the ASUS Tough Gaming 6800 XT. When compared to PowerColor's own base model fighter, we're looking at a massive 13 degree reduction in operating temperature, and that improvement has been achieved by using a better cooler, as well as less heat being dumped into the PCB by stuff like the VRM and GPU. Now, with the graphics card's noise normalized to 40 decibels, we see just how good the Red Dragon really is. Although I don't have many AIB custom RX 6800 graphics cards for comparison yet, in fact, I really only have PowerColor's fighter, the results, even on their own, are very impressive. Just 52 degrees for the GPU edge temperature, and that's a significant reduction when compared to the very best 6800 XT models. Of course, they do consume a lot more power, but still, this is a great result. Even more impressive is the hotspot temperature. This highly efficient graphics card peaked at just 64 degrees, and that's remarkably cool for a high performance graphics card. That's also a massive 14 degree temperature reduction when compared to the fighter, and an insane 22 degrees cooler than the AMD reference model, though that is a dual slot version that draws a lot more power. 
Again, the peak VRM temperature was excellent, topping out at just 55 degrees, which is an 8 degree reduction when compared to the fighter. That said, I should note that while a rather significant improvement, both models are exceptionally cool and are well below the thermal threshold for these components. The peak GDDR6 memory temperature is also exceptionally low when noise normalized. Here we're looking at just 51 degrees, which is a 4 degree improvement when compared to the fighter. So another great result for PowerColor's Red Dragon. Like PowerColor's RX 6800 fighter, the slightly more premium Red Dragon model is very good. Again, although I don't have that much in the way of comparative data, it also doesn't really matter. Out of the box, it's near enough to silent, and I'd say in almost all setups, it won't be heard over the case fans when under full load, and yet temperatures were kept well within check. We're talking about a peak GPU hotspot of just 76 degrees while generating just 31 decibels of noise. That being the case, the PowerColor RX 6800 Red Dragon is a product I can recommend and do recommend you snap up if you can do so at a reasonable price, which is of course the catch right now. Over at Newegg.com, this is being sold by Newegg for, and it hurts me to say this, $945 US. Given it's probably meant to cost around $600 US, that's an insane markup. But as you'll be painfully aware at this point, the inflated pricing isn't limited to PowerColor, Newegg.com, or US buyers. Oh, and of course, it's also out of stock. Anyway, I'm not going to bang on about pricing and availability. Again, you guys are already painfully aware of the current situation. Point is, should the situation improve, the Red Dragon is a product you should be on the lookout for. And with that, I've got nothing else to say other than... If you found this video useful, then please do give it a like. Uh, you can subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to join the Harbour Box community, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. You get access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, uh, behind the scenes content, Q and A's, a lot of cool stuff there. So yeah, if you're interested, the links are in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.